Despite all that, the hatred still exists. Sometimes we're more jealous of something that we know that we could have had, and so sometimes that adds to the jealousy. The fact that I could have said yes to the receiving of the Torah, or it's something that today I could wake up and decide that I want to have a connection with the Torah, and you choose not to, that sometimes brings more ire. That sometimes brings more... Every person has the ability to ask Hashem, ask God for advice, right? Our tradition teaches in the Gemara and Tainus that, that there's nothing that's not hinted at in the Torah. Everything is hinted at in the Torah. And so the solution that one finds when using the Torah as sort of your night vision goggles, that's Hashem's advice. That's God's advice to you. Now, certainly... It contains clear instructions to Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish nation as a whole, including how to manage the relationship with nations that are oppressing you, nations that are out uh, to, to harm you. And so the Torah explains um, what anti-Semitism is and how to prevent it. The Torah also provides us with the instructions for responding to anti-Semitism once it flares up. So what is the Torah's view of anti-Semitism? So Mount Sinai in Hebrew is called Har Sinai. Mount Sinai, Har Sinai. And the Torah tells us why is it called Har Sinai. Torah tradition teaches, this is the Gemara, the, the Talmud, the Gemara in Shabbos, says it's called Har Sinai because at that moment when the Jews accepted the Torah on it, it created Sina. It created animosity that that uh, came upon the nations of the world. Embedded in the spiritual fabric of creation is a certain degree of, of animosity because the Jews had accepted the Torah and others had not. There's, there's different explanations and commentaries, uh, but for our purposes, Rabbeinu Bachia uh, says, uh, among others, uh, it, it's because of the Torah, it's because God gave the Torah to our nation that there is a, a spiritual, uh, not, a good, not, not in a good spiritual way, but a spiritual undergirding of envy. And because of their envy, they hate us. Again, this is obviously not talking about all the non-Jewish nations and every person in, in, in any particular nation. This is not... This is not what we're talking about over here, but a blatant inner hatred for this concept of a Jew. If, that, if you find that it exists in a person, this is the spiritual source of it. And the Rambam too, the, the famed medieval sage Maimonides, writes in, in his uh, Igeris Teman, he says, Because Hashem, because God, has singled us out with his laws and with his statutes, uh, and... Uh, uh, therefore, other nations of the world envied our religion, and their kings committed themselves to persecute us uh, with injustice and hostility. And their desire was to wage war against Hashem and to oppose Him. Again, this is not talking about every single person, but when anti-Semitism comes up, this is its spiritual root. Anti-Semitism is due to jealousy, that anti-Semites have, even even beyond what, even uh, something that they don't even, they can't even realize, they don't even understand that this is where it's coming from. If, a, if an anti-Semite went to a psychologist and, and explored different aspects of his personality, assuming there was nothing that an actual Jew did to him and he holds it against all the Jews, but just on a, on a, on a regular, on a regular uh, basis, where does this where does this animosity come from, right? And so he may not even be aware of where it comes from. Again, we, we, we discussed earlier in today's lesson that there's nothing that you can point to uh, as being a Jew, right? With all the various examples of what constitutes or what all, all share the title Jew, but are completely differently dressed, have a completely different look, have oftentimes a completely different worldview, but yet this concept of the Jew 
is still very present and very hated amongst the anti-Semite. So anti-Semitism, the spiritual root of it, is due to the jealousy that the anti-Semites have because we possess the Torah and the benefits that the Torah bestows upon us. And so this, despite the fact that the anti-Semites were offered the Torah and refused it, right? Still on a spiritual, on a spiritual level, they recognized that they were offered it. God offered the Torah to all of the nations of the world. And they refused it and that, that any member of the nations who desires can obtain the Torah and can live by the Torah. That, that's, that, that is the truth. But despite all that, despite all that, the hatred still exists. Sometimes, sometimes we're more jealous of something that we know that we could have had uh, than some than what we are that that's completely removed from us. And so sometimes that adds to the jealousy. The fact that I could have said yes to the receiving of the Torah, or it's something that today I could wake up and decide that I want to have a connection with the Torah, and you choose not to. That sometimes brings more ire. That sometimes brings more hatred because it's something that is in the possibility and you kick yourself harder because it's something that actually you could do. And so because anti-Semitism is an animosity that stems from jealousy, it behooves us to downplay any advantage and any success that we might have. If, if, someone, if someone was jealous of us in general, we would likely choose to be extra polite to them. Right? To assuage any sort of hostility that that person might harbor for us. We, we, would, we wouldn't want to act in an arrogant way or flaunt our success in their face. We'd want to just kind of like lay low and just, you know, do, do what you got to do. Not, not, not flare up all sorts of excitement that, that we are the Jews, hear us roar, we are the best. You know, like that, that's, not, that's, that's not beneficial to anybody. And frankly, that's often not true. And so the safest place for the Jews in Dolos, in exile, is under the radar. Just not, not just kind of like lay low, do your thing, do what we're supposed to do, right? Remain inconspicuous, and that's that. That's it. Hashem created different threats, different types of threats that would require different types of reactions. And so when someone so, in general, like the way that Hashem created the world, the way God created the world is that certain threats uh, should be approached and, and dealt with in different ways. So, when someone's attacked by a shark, the best thing that they're supposed to do is whack it on the nose as, as many times as you can. But if the same person is attacked by a grizzly bear, the reaction is supposed to be, you're supposed to play dead. Right? Just lie on, lie on the, lie down and play dead. So, it's the same it's the same type of opposition, in theory, right? It's two forces coming at you, but they have two completely different ways in which they are meant to be uh, reacted to. And so, uh, when we, we our our goal, our job is not to is not to fight back and to is not to be uh, in your face and not not to be a, be inconspicuous. Right? We do our thing, we learn our Torah, we do our mitzvahs, we, do, we, we engage in the world, we, we, uh, we do what we're supposed to do, but we don't have to make a big thing out of it. There are two ways that you, that you can deal with a disease, right? You can cure it, or if the disease can't be cured, if anti-Semitism can't be cured, it can at least be managed. There are sometimes at least, even if, even if somebody is diagnosed with a disease that can't be, that can't be uh, cured, there are ways in which you can manage the pain and manage the, the manifestation of the disease. So managing an incurable disease means that you live with the disease, but you administer treatment that would prevent its symptoms from harming and from disturbing the, 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 the patient. Right? Anti-Semitism is an incurable disease. We are not going to come up with an ideology that is going to, we're not going to come up with another ism. Right? Before it was socialism, communism, humanism, all the other isms. We're not going to come up with an ism that is going to get rid of anti-Semitism. What we need to do, what we need to do is just do our thing, lay low, not cause any, not cause any sort of scene. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm also not saying that any time anti-Semitism has come up is because all of the Jews at that time or that place or whatever were guilty of doing such a thing. But the best way to, to deal with an anti-Semitic aggressor is, 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 to, is to just sort of lay low. 
not flaunt yourself, not uh, not um, not let the ire swell up uh, even more, right? So, uh, if imagine that you have a sheep that's sort of surrounded by wolves, so that the more inconspicuous, the more more uh, harmless and, and unthreatening, and you know, kind of on the wayside that the sheep can look, the, the less the wolves are going to, want, you know, want to want to eat it. The less the wolves will notice the sheep, the better, you know. Um, and so, if you look at the Jewish people, if you look at this this Torah nation, as as if we as if we were one of the nations of the world, our survival is inexplicable. But if you look at the Jewish nation as a custom-made metaphysical nation that was set apart by God, chosen for a specific mission, then it becomes that our, our unique nature, um, our, our, our reason for survival becomes readily apparent. There is a purpose for the nation to exist that, that that purpose has not yet been achieved. The nation was promised to be an eternal nation. It makes perfect sense that the nation is here. And so one of the things that are that are important, and based on our discussion, I'm gonna kind of tie it up. We can go on about this really for hours. I mean there's there is so much to to talk about in this. Maybe we'll do a sequel uh, in the in the near future. But here here are some of the points that we can take out of this and how to um, how to promote, how to, uh, again, uh, get rid of it, not get rid of anti-Semitism, manage anti-Semitism, and uh, eradicate it uh, on, a, on a global scale from a Torah perspective. And they both are centered in Torah. Again, anti-Semitism, as we learned, that Hashem makes a separation between day and night, between the Jewish nation and the nations of the world, and that means that God does not want our Torah worldview and our Torah observance to be usurped by secular culture, the culture of the nations around us. As long as we are preserving our Torah tradition, that actually helps that anti-Semitism doesn't quell up. Again, yeah, it's not necessarily a direct cause and effect. This is all sort of spiritual underlay that, that exists in the world. But the more we are, are march proud as Jews, not as, look at that, that Jew who's who's the biggest doctor and the Nobel Prize winner and the sports star and the, whatever it is, but look at that Jew who exemplifies Torah and Torah values and what the Torah it means for the world, that actually attracts the nations of the world. That actually is something that is seen in a good light. It's kind of like how when, it, when a Jewish person, unfortunately, publicly does something wrong. They're busted for some big thing, especially if they look like a Jew and act like a Jew and you were, you know, were religious or had the trimmings of a religious person. It's always seen as like a bigger deal. It's, and uh, it's, oh, look, look what the Jew did, right? Uh, but when a Jew is doing what they're supposed to do and we're acting in accordance with the Torah and when we're acting as, uh, as, the, as a light unto the nations, then anti-Semitism actually does, uh, is, is lessened. The re respect that others will have for us just naturally will come out uh, from that type of example. In fact, when we on a, on a global scale are acting in the, in the realm of Torah, when we're encouraging others to act in the realm of Torah as well, we create a peaceful and good environment, which the world was planned to be anyway. If a person really wants to uh, act, be active in quelling anti-Semitism, in eradicating darkness and dark ideas from the world, the greatest way that you can do that is by adding in light. And what that means specifically is getting more in sync with the Torah worldview. The Torah worldview is the light that has been given to the world. It has been given to the Jewish nation to be a light unto the nation. We're all here to work together to make this place into a radiating divine dwelling place. And if we do our part in the divine mission that God set forth, there is no room for the darkness. If the world is so consumed with light, there's no room for darkness. The greatest way that we confront anti-Semitism is not by making uh, 
by by making protests and surveys and 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 uh, lawsuits and uh, this this sometimes only adds uh, adds to the mess. The greatest thing that we can do is strengthen in our divine light that was bestowed upon us, and that is our adherence to the Torah. The more mitzvahs that we do, the more commandments that we do, the more Torah that we learn, the more we pray, the more we're involved in what the Torah deems a priority and deems the purpose for the world, the light shines and darkness goes away. So I, I hope that this is something that's helpful, that's useful, on a practical scale, I hope that you and your individual life uh, will be an example. Whatever your background is, if you're of the Jewish faith, be proud of your of your Torah adherence. Be proud of the traditions. Be proud of the commandments, the light that you were given uh, that began all the way back by our forefather Abraham that you've inherited, that you've gained. Uh, and if you're of the nations of the world, be an example in your own life. Uh, follow the the ethical premises, the ethical commandments uh, set forth in the Torah. Inspire your neighbors to do the same. Encourage them to to be, become a part not of the Jewish nation, but a part of the Torah mentality, the Torah world mentality. And this, by adding in this light, this is how we eradicate not only the darkness of anti-Semitism, not only the darkness of all evil whatsoever. We eradicate all death and destruction, and ultimately this will come to fruition very soon with the coming of Mashiach, when the whole light, the whole world will shine in a glorious way, filled with the radiance of God for all nations to see and participate in.